bro. Okay, good, good to go, my man. Woo, child. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look, hey man, I'm here with my man Raul. And um, before we get kicked off, uh, one of the things I really, I, I, I this space is sacred to me because we're about to have a convo, and I love this guy right here. Uh, I appreciate this man right here. So whenever I'm in a space like this, I like to, I like for us to ground. So usually I'll do that in the pregame, and I'm taking you, I'm taking you all with us. So I'm gonna invite you all to place your feet on the floor. And as you do that, close your eyes and check on your footprint. Yes, your footprint. How are your feet connected to either the inside of your shoes or the floor? Are all your toes connected? If and if if they are yet to get connected, it's okay. Like allow all of your toes to be connected to ground. You may have to wiggle your feet a little bit, maybe move your body. This is grounding and connection. Now from this place, I invite you to breathe deeply, inhale through your nostrils, and then exhale through your mouth with a sigh if you want. And as I light this sage, I want you to breathe in deeper and slower if you can. And allow whatever has gone on throughout the day, you could put it to the side for right now. Be present. And as you hear these words and as you inhale deeply and exhale, and as I burn the sage on this end, envision, sense that you can smell the sage too. And from this place, as we burn this sage, I call in all directions, spirits of the east, spirits of the west, spirits of the north, spirits of the south. We sing for you. We call to you in love and gratitude. Spirits up above, we call and sing to you in love and gratitude. And spirits up below, we call and sing to you in love and gratitude. And as all those come together, it's here we are, the within. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, all those energies that are here with us in this conversation. For Raul and I to bring our highest selves and all ourselves to this conversation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are grateful. And so it is. Sure. <sighs> yeah. All righty. Well, well, see, now everyone, that's how you can check it. Okay. That's how you can ground yourself. All right. And listen, uh, one of the things, because uh, Raul <clears throat> and I are um, connected to, uh, to and through uh, an organization called All Kings. And uh, we have a check-in, right? And there's a way that we can check in. So I've, I modeled this on one of the previous podcasts, and Raul and I are going to share another way. We're actually going to have a little fun with it. So we're going to do a PIMS check-in, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Okay? This is a way you can check in with your fellas, check in with uh, another folks. So listen, the thing is, though, here's the twist. Raul and I are going to share... Only three words in each section. Only three words. All right. So I'm like, Raul, I'm gonna model this because I'm like, right, I should have I should have rehearsed this anyway. You know what? I'm walking in without knowing what I'm gonna say. So it's <laughs> Yo, just, let's just walk into this thing. Right? That's why we do this, Raul. Yeah, See what I'm saying, man. bro? Keep it real, keep it raw. That's what it is. No wrong answer. That's what it is, man. And uh, let's go. Okay, so physically. Mm. Mm, physically wired, sore, revving, emotionally, sadness, 
uh, sullied. And inspired, which is joy. That's that's like a that's a hyphen. That's a hyphen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all right. So mentally, um, focused, uh, ready, anxious, anxious. Wow. Wow. Damn. Um, spiritually, oof. Arriving. Impatient. Eager. And I'm in. I'll show you, brother. Thank you, Thank brother. Thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Checking in physically. Sore. Strong. Mm, re-energized emotionally joy lots of joy mm, feeling sadness mm, feeling numb also there's like this numbness is tough mm. mentally curious Critical. Mm. I want to say movement. Things are spinning. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Spiritually mm. feeling grounded, connected, and grateful. I'm in with that, man. Ashe. Ooh, mm-hmm. child. <laughs> Yo, that was fresh. That keep was, it real. I keep it real. That, I have to, I have to hunt, man. <laughs> Yo, and see, so that's the piece, right? And uh, you know, I wanna I wanna I wanna introduce you and I wanna I wanna mm-hmm. touch on this piece of being able to come to a space in whatever however you show up, right? And and call it, right? Seek it, search for it, like be curious about it. Mm-hmm. Right. That's this piece about the check in. So, OK, like, you know, we'll, we'll um, let's get to this, because I know you cats are hearing this dude's voice and you're like, yo, who this guy sounds fresh. <laughs> yeah, man. So, listen, this is my guy, Raul Espinoza. That's pronounced that correct, correctly. Correctly. Yeah, Espinoza. Blessings. That's right. Thank you. Bless up, man. So um, Raul and I met through this organization, All Kings. Um, it's uh, it's a men's. Um, I, I would say an organization that's helping to reduce recidivism and that's working with men that have either been in the prison system or are in danger of going in the prison system. And it provides community. It provides um, initiation, which we're going to talk about today. And it, it provides like, man, you know, I've, I, do my best to stay away from using hope often, the word hope often. Mm -hmm. And to me, I see this organization gives hope uh, because like, you know, well, I'm on the inside. So for confidentiality, I'm not going to, I'm going to be free of telling you all what we see. And it's like, what I feel in this is like, this is an organization that's really, that's real, man. This is just like, yo, I know if I call any one of these cats, they'd be like, yo, who you with? (laughs) Yo, what you need, Paul? what you need so one of the things like when i first saw raul i was like yo man i i i remember there was this all this energy about you raul that i was just like yo man this dude's gonna end up being one of the leaders of this movement and i i gotta check in with gethin and, and kevin but like those are the two guys with well, two of the guys that found it but i was remember being like yo this dude's the truth right here and I've always held you in a high regard ever since the first time I met you. And then when we were taking pictures and you did some breakdancing move, I was like, yo, my <laughs> man's galactic. He's galactic, yo. What? Da, da, da. So, bro, I, I, I appreciate you. And you're one of your, um, uh, tell me the role. You're executive director? I'm executive director now of All Kings. Yeah. Yes. Bless up, man. So, listen. Appreciate it. Man. I knew it. 
I knew <laughs> you it. Did. You called, called it. Yo, call me Mr. Jump, Cleo man. from the jump. Man, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Um, so listen, I'm excited to have Raul on because this is this conversation, this topic is something that's been on my mind for a bit. And it's and it's um the topic of initiation. And I thought Raul would be a great person to chop it up with on this because we always have great conversations. So uh Raul is the executive director of All Kings. He's also um a media uh specialist. Because if I recall correctly, you do photography, you do video, you're world travel, you do beautiful work. I've seen your work, I'm like this dude are like a creative artist and like a mystic artist, like I see in your work, man, it's beautiful. Um, so that's yeah. that's my introduction of you. And I want to uh, toss it over to you. <clears throat> Is there anything else that you want to add um, to what I've said? Um, and also to introduce yourself, man. Yeah, thank you for that, brother. And and really, it's an it's honor to be having a conversation with you. Just from the jump, you and I just dove in and just had a bond and connection. Right. And it's the playing catch with thoughts about this whole thing that's around us and the thing that we embody and interact with every day and yeah, tell into spirit and doing the work. Uh, yeah. But yeah, my name is Raul. I'm the executive director of All Kings. I've been doing transformational work for about 15 years now. Uh, I've worked on different platforms and some of my own initiatives. Uh, been fortunate enough to travel around the world working primarily with the press community. So that was my jam about what I was doing out there, utilizing photography and film on impact storytelling. How do we support these local initiatives, these these hidden heroes in the crevices of the world that are just standing up and doing something to take care of their people? You know, so I lived in from the favelas of Brazil to Iraq to India, Spain, Senegal, and I bounced around uh going on 50 countries, man. Just working with wow. a lot of Whoa. Work, yeah, working with a lot of a lot of impact initiatives. And I was raised here in New York. So coming back to here it's time it was time to connect with my community and up with mm. my people locally and, mm. and so that's what i'm here man that's what i'm mm. about brother it's so wild man brother i like wow 50 countries yeah wow uh man i want to get into like what are your top three but i'm like man <laughs> we have to that may be a whole other conversation because i want to yeah. talk to more men about traveling i think it's important for, for us sure. to travel absolutely um and it's wild like as um as we're going to talk about initiation i was hearing you say that you've supported a lot of initiatives mm -hmm. <laughs> right i'm like wait there's the root to there's the root again mm -hmm. so i'm fascinated because like what i'm we're going in so like what was it you have like an initiatory energy about you right because you're supporting initiatives you're doing like transformational work what is um what is it about this work that is intriguing and also sticky for you man sticky as in something i resist about it no like sticky like you just pull to it like you okay, just cool. put your hand yeah. on it you're like oh i just want to hold you up i'm yeah, not yeah. letting go you know i have both i'll come with my truth to both the thing that evokes me to mm. it and the thing that repels me against it mm. uh, yeah so i mean just in a sense of the word, man, initiation, the, the start of this thing. And usually, you know, by textbook, it means inviting in to a society or a practice or something. Yeah. Um, but the way I've always related to initiation was the spark of truth, the start mm. of truth. And mm. so that is really subjective to whoever is starting the initiative itself and what they stand for, what they mean. By, but by this thing that they're doing is starting what is the truth and what's the byproduct of this truth that occurs? Because we could we could do something out in the world and it could create separation, destruction. And I started it. Right. Or I could also start the thing that unifies and heals and brings together and camaraderie, community. Um, and so to initiate is to bring in this truth, you know, making it accessible, paving the path, uh, creating kind of the gateway, like the, the gate into this truth. Um, and so the thing that's... Mm. The thing that I think is beautiful about it is that at least the initiatives that I've worked for is that this truth was always inclusive and it was fighting for the underdog. It's It was mm. fighting for something that the larger powers that are having everything intact in the world has a certain agenda. And this initiation is creating a new paradigm, a new way to relate to our reality. And yeah. so I worked with a lot of people that were doing that, like meaning well, doing good, in their communities for the collective and yeah. i just 
and coming, uh, you know, I could, I don't know if we're going to get into my story or not, but coming from my household where it was against the odds and it was against the grain and there was a lot of struggle, mm. I love to uplift the people who are meaning well above their circumstances. Mm. And, and so that's, that's what I stand for. So that's what's sticky for me. It's it's that the fact that you don't have to and you choose to stand for this. Like, yeah. That's, I'm, I'm totally down for that. So, man, now, now, I've, now I want to know your story more. Uh, because like let's let's take a step back man um because i heard you say something like you know because of like what you how you grew up right mm -hmm. so like if you're if 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 we're if your your childhood was a book or how you grew up was a book like how would you describe this book man oh the first thing that comes up in my mind is the bold interruption uh mm. the my childhood I feel like when I was born up to like really young ages, I had the family life. I was born in Texas. I was raised okay. here, but I was born in Texas till I was 10. Um, oh, okay. And it felt, it felt, and it was probably because being naive, but I experienced, you know, connection, unity. You know, my, my pops would be cooking in the kitchen, grab my mom every once in a while to dance. My siblings would be at the table and we would break bread together. Right. And then by the time I was five, it's like all of that started sort of crumbling apart. Uh, I grew up in a household that was physically abusive, mentally abusive, emotionally mm -hmm. abusive. My my pops would, you know, beat my mom. You beat us, and it wasn't an all the time type thing, but enough to be an mm -hmm. interruption to stump whatever curiosity, like whatever was going on in school, was completely yeah. irrelevant because I just got mm -hmm. smacked into the real world. <clears throat> whatever was going on in this recreation and fun, this distraction was relevant because it's not what I'm living day to day, mm -hmm. and. Um, and so I was really interrupted for that. And I got born into this, you know, as a Latino, man up, toughen up, boys don't cry, got to suck yeah. it up, we got to stick together, we got to fight through it. And that was a conditioning of mm. what I was around uh, yep. all the time when I was when I was a kid. Mm, man, brother, you, you just, you said, you said, you said some things that resonate deep with me. Uh, first thing is when you said the bold interruption and I, at first I was like, what does that mean? But how you described it is beautiful because there, there is an interruption when a kid experiences those types of things. And it creates, I, I'm going to speak for myself anyway, it created for me um, like a dissonance, like a, a, a cutting off and an early ability to be able to mask my shit. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think it really disrupted and interrupted my ability to really be a kid and play and have fun. I think it, from a young age, I, I took things so seriously and like I was very much to myself, you know what I mean? And it's like, when you said that, you, you, oh, then that was the other thing you said. It was like, what was going on at school was irrelevant because like, it was like, I'll be smacked back in reality. You know what I mean? And I, I resonate with that. My hand was up with that, man, mm -hmm. because that's a piece I think that uh, that I think really starts to switch started to switch things for me and I think it's part of my drive to be of service to the underdog which is something else you said like mm -hmm. and 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 you know you and I've talked about this before like you know just like this willingness to want to be of service but then like figure out like oh junk I got to be a service to myself yes <laughs> you know what i'm saying yes, like oh absolutely. junk uh so like when you were growing up especially um dang there's so many places i want to go with that uh, i'm gonna come <laughs> back ah god we'll come back but like um it's so wild because like as you're talking about growing up like in that in those conditions while it was it was you know inconsistent right it was infrequent it was still something that interrupted things like when you look at like you looking back at that now has has how you look back on that time now shifted after you you know as you've gone through these initiations or is it like you know you still see things the same oh it completely i mean the more I, the more i learn it's it's a little ironic to say but the more i learn the more i unlearn the, the more that I learned perception, perspective, uh, alternative views, challenging my mindset and my filters on how, you, how I view the reality, my reality and my belief systems, then I have a chance to revisit them 
and mm. even had the courage, woke up the courage to allow myself to let them go. Because this this is this is a whole nother path, but I believe that our entire reality is made up of belief systems that are intact. The fine coding, the thing that goes underneath the system, the subconscious well beyond the dictates our, our current reality. And so our money, our relationships, our health, our spirituality, our our labor, our free time, all that stuff is dictated by how we think the world works. Um, and the so the stories, the yeah, stories, bro. Completely. And so I had these ther- these narratives, man. When I was growing up, I, you know, we we came that that was from you know one to ten, whatever mm-hmm. that was going on in my household, right? And then. My, we pretty much ran away from my dad uh, and so gotcha. they came to New York with my mom and my sisters. No money, struggling, mom working two jobs, jaded, angry as hell. So emotionally, she was withdrawn. Mm. You know, my pop's mm. not physically around, so he's not around. My sisters are are good, to, are like happy to be in New York. So they don't, yeah. so empathy is not present. Um, I are they older mission. than you? Yeah, they're all on the okay. baby, the family. Yeah. Okay, got you. Me too. And, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so I grew up around that where I thought, okay, cool. Like before I was subscribed to a religious based God, uh, which now I have my, I'm, I have my spirituality and my practices, but they're not, they're not uh, based on any religious practice. Mm. Um, mm. But then I was just like, if this is God's doing, you, you, you messed up and this is, mm. you need to get fired real fast <laughs> because it's like the first 20, the first 20 years of my life, man, there was just like, haze and darkness but i was angry angry yeah. all the time i was a peaceful dude man i was always loving and peaceful but you crossed me the wrong way and i was a firecracker i was just ready to pop and and so i had these demons that were that were well you know well intact and it wasn't until i learned that my view on reality is not the only view that could be had and there are different forms of it and different perspectives about it mm. that i started learning some of the tools to, to create a new life, create mm. a new thing. And so when we talk about initiation, you're, you're, you're saying that I'm being brought in from my world into this other practice world. I'm bringing, and, and I have now ritual and practice and exercises to, to I can live by, and that itself shifts my paradigm. Brother, oh man, first of all, when you said, the more I learn, the more I unlearn, I was like, dang, I had the ugly face on, I was like, <laughs> Damn, I'm sorry. Yo, yeah. I wanted to hit that zoop, 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 yeah. rewind on that piece, bro. Because, yeah. like, man, because it summed up, it summed up so well everything that you said from like being able to the first of all the beliefs, right? And I'm a big fan. I'm a big. I'm a big proponent of people looking at our story. Right. And like, you know, look, I know I, I'm, I'm judging, right, that most men are like, yeah, a majority of men are like, I'm not going to tap into my feelings. Like, yeah, OK, you can be free of tapping in your feelings. At least tap into your story, son. Yeah. Yo, tap into your story, because yeah. in that that is the belief system that we carry. And mm-hmm. I appreciate what you say, my brethren, because when you talk about being able to understand that there is another perspective of this story. There's another way to view this. There's another way to receive this Mm -hmm. brother. That's when things it's like a willingness, man. It's a willingness. And this, again, this comes to the initiation, right? Um, This comes back to when you, when you summed it up, you actually, how you summed it up, brought back something that um, you said beforehand about your version of initiation, which is like the, creating the gateway right the gateway into something different and i think that that's the piece that's so um that's so potent man because Mm -hmm. you know there's always this story and even in like some initiation weekends i've been on and like you know and even from history like they talked about when you talk about one to ten right Mm -hmm. that was when some kids were getting initiated so like as you're talking about this like your initiation started at 10. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and also because like, you know, people, people that know me know I'm a, I'm a yoga guy. I'm all into the chakras and energy centers. Mm-hmm. And if you're like, what the heck is this guy talking about? I'm glad you asked. There's energy centers throughout our body, all up and down our spine. At the base of our spine 
is a root energy center, which is the seat of our sense of security and safety. So if we're in our lives, we see any sort of traumatic experience, that's putting a ding, a nick on our sense of safety and on our belief system of what safety and security even is. Even when we talk about like financial, like financial security, relational security, social security, um, all these things. Then after the, about in seven or eight, then we start tapping into the sacral energy center. So that's like our creative center, center, sense of things, our sexual sense of things. So for a boy to be around his dad uh, at the beginning at that age range, all the way up to 14, they start to learn about sexuality. And like I heard you before say, yo, your dad you used to see your dad take your mom like, yo, let's get this. Fickers. Let's get this dance on. Yeah. love. Let's go. Yeah. It's like, listen, there's a part of it that's like, yo, th- you know, I look back on it and like the healing I've done. I recognize for my dad, like they, he didn't know anything, right? He knew like he had he had yet to get to that place where the more he learned, the more he had to unlearn, mm-hmm. right? Because that unlearning is rewiring a belief system. So yeah. I think it's really potent that we talk about that because I personally believe that that's that like, you know, well, I personally believe that initiation is the beginning of something. Mm-hmm. Right. Like while they talk about the initiatory weekends and there's a lot of them that are coming up, which is bless up. There's more opportunity. Fellas, there's opportunity out there for you to open yes, up to is. something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's an opportunity. So coming to this, like I'm a big word dude and I, I like definitions. So one of the definitions of initiation is the beginning of something. So I'm going to ch- I'd like for us to check in like so. Like what was what did our initiation begin for us, man? Right, like, and I'll t- I'll kick it off, but like, and man, I wanna I wanna tap in for a second and just explain like when we talk about initiation, and if you're at home and you're listening to us in your car, maybe you pause and think about like first of all, what does initiation mean for you? Mm-hmm. Right, Raul said, um, yo, it's bringing in truth. It's creating a gateway to the fight for the underdog. Like, that's why you got into the initiatory work. For me, initiation is stepping into an unknown in creation. Mm-hmm. It's stepping in. It's step. It's also initiation is stepping to myself. All my fears, all my concerns, all the stuff I'd rather not talk to or be about. Okay, I'm going to step to that piece because that's the only that's my path to growth. Yeah. An ascension. So for me, I'm going to call what the initiation was. And at first, when I like at first, like I thought, like when I when I thought of the question before, at first, I would be like, oh, it's my mankind project. Right. Nope. My divorce. Mm. That was my initiation, man. Because like I'll tell you, I don't know if I told you a story, but like that night when I decided to leave. Like up until that point, like I started drinking progressively heavier and heavier, right? Like I would like, and I could hold my alcohol. So like people would know I was banged up as I was, but my intention was like, I'm hoping to get so banged up that I just run my car into a pole and end this shit. Cause I was miserable. I just had my kid. He had been 18 months at the time when I left. And I was like, I was miserable. Like this story of like, Hey, I'm going to get married <clears throat> and have a kid. And I'm going to get a house on a corner with a fence. I literally had a house on a corner with a fence. And it was like, and it was far from what I thought life and happiness was going to be. I was freaking miserable. So the night before I decided I was leaving, I was at a wedding for my friends. I'm banged up. I had seven pictures. I did have se- yo, because, yeah, I, I, know it was a, I know it was over five pictures of red sangria. Got behind the wheel. Went to, at, this is at the end of the wedding. Got behind the wheel. Went to Wendy's. I lost control of my car and I ran my car into a into a, a sign. My car was still drivable. I was like, I gotta get the hell out of here. I'm driving. I'm close to home. I'm driving. I get pulled over by the cops. Mm-hmm. Now, I could have went to jail. I could have went to jail. In my car, I'm like, listen, whatever happens, I earn this. So bring whatever happens. But I tell you what, whatever, if, if I get out of this, I got to make some changes. Mm-hmm. Cop comes back. He was like, you're close to home. Just get home safe. I was like, 
So, bro, I go to my house, man. I'm sitting outside. There's a tree in my, in my yard. I roll up a joint. I sit in the yard, and I'm talking to God, universe, Allah, my mm -hmm. higher self, whatever. And they were like, listen, we showed you a sign. Now, you can stay where you are, or you can step into the unknown mm -hmm. and seek and get what you seek. And I was like, I got to leave. And that's when everything started, bro. Mm. That's when, like, and, and listen, I say this because in everything, like, this is when the depression started. This is when I had to go even deeper. I had to learn some things to unlearn. Mm -hmm. I had to go all up in the crevice, go in the roots, and learn to pick myself back up. Yeah. And I'm still on a journey. Yeah. But that was when, for me, that, so, so what did the initiation begin? It began my my attainment of my purpose and my rewards mm -hmm. like tapping into myself like yo what am i here for really mm -hmm. what do i do here what's my bliss forget happiness what's my bliss man mm -hmm. so even when days shit i'm like yo i'm still good living on my land yeah i'll figure it out so it started that's what it started for me that's what it began for yeah. me man and i'm in yeah, you know, you know, thank you, thank you so much for sharing your truth, bro. There's there's something that comes to mind when I think about initiation. Um, now that the more we're talking about it, we checked in with that physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Right. And there's this initiation is an activation of a new relationship and agreement with those four things and beyond. You mm. know, it's like what is the new agreement now with your body? What's the new agreement now with your emotions, with your spirituality, yes. with your mindset? Like yes. you're coming into a new thing that you get to choose. It's up to you. Uh, but it's something that becomes available. Yeah, you know, man. unfortunately, unfortunately, what I see is that the majority of time in our society, in our reality, initiations are more of a reaction. It's involuntary. I got, I, I couldn't have chosen that for myself. I couldn't have chosen my reality that I stepped into and, the things that it had to awaken in me, whether mm. good, bad, or you know, win, lose, or draw. Yeah. I didn't choose a lot of those those experiences. And I I resorted back to like a default setting on how I choose to. So I get it. Man, for some people yeah. to change their reality, change their mind, change their perspective. <laughs> like some people, like, I don't know why they keep on doing that. It doesn't work. You don't you have to understand this person is alive and here right now because of something that they had to hold on to, whether they had to be a warrior and fight through something or shut down or however they chose to deal with that stuff. We got to empathize. And we just we're doing our best. We we usually get hit with these things in life when we're not even ready. We didn't even know the world operates this way. That's why it's, it's called trauma. Yeah, it's called trauma because trauma is an experience that our mind can't comprehend that just lives in the body. It gets stored in the microfibers and who we are. But in our mind, I can't comprehend. I don't know what a beating is at six years old, five years old. But my body knows what it means. Mm -hmm. And I carry that trauma and, and what that meant for me. And I allowed mm. that to be like, all right, cool. I just learned a little bit more how the world works. And this is the best way I know how to respond. Brother, a shay, yes, and uh it can and amen. Mm. And amen. Like, cause and and this is Bro, man, dang, that just, I got chills on that because this trauma piece is real, man. And I, and I appreciate, I, like, I want to pause for a second because I want to, I want to, I definitely want to tap into what the initiation begin, be, began for you. And maybe we don't, I don't know. But like, I just think it's important for two men of color to talk to trauma for a moment in relation to initiation. Mm -hmm. Because, and also in relation to what you talked about before, belief. Because, as you mentioned, like at six, if, if I'm gonna, I'll use myself as an example. Like when my parents got divorced, like I thought it was because of me. That's a trauma, right? And then the thing is, it's a complex trauma because it's interrelational. And what makes that complex is now it's multi-layered. It reaches and spans different things. So the key piece, I, I, I want like especially for men of color that are listening to this my judgment and what i my experience has told has taught me that for our culture it's easier to put our trauma in a bottle or a joint or like sex 
or different things. And there's ways of even like, listen, I say these things, but even like art, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, exercise, you know, these are the things where I know I can really lose myself or let trauma take over for me where it's like, I think I'm getting a great workout, but I'm like releasing stress in a way that's actually more damaging to my heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yep. it's like, there's, there's this piece of acknowledging like there is a trauma and free of it being like, Oh, I don't want to talk about my traumas. No, listen, it's okay. When I got hip surgeries, that was a trauma to my body. Mm -hmm. I had to address that piece. When somebody steps on your big toe, your toe is traumatized. Mm -hmm. It wants to curl up next to your foot. You know, shit. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. So, like, yeah. So, I'm curious. Like, just talk to for a second on the trauma in relation to initiation and your experience, and also like what you've seen with all kings. Like, how important? How important would you consider initiation in relation to resolving trauma or addressing trauma? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. To, to go backwards, the initiation, I don't, I don't think every initiation uh, incorporates resolving trauma, unfortunately. Mm. Sometimes it's just medicating it, treating it, mm. you know, sustaining it, keeping it at bay. Um, mm. There's some initiations be like, man, we're going to do this practice because, again, the mental agreement has shut that part down because it's interrupting everything else. I'm, I'm over here trying to make money. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm trying to survive i'm trying to eat i'm trying to whatever it is might be that thing is getting in the way so in order mm. for us to go down down this path these are some of the things we need to desensitize and there's consequences mm. there's rewards and consequences no matter which which route you take um but but be mindful about that stuff so when i'm thinking about like my initiation i think about the voluntary and involuntary ones so okay. one of them one of them i remember being a little kid i think it was like seven six or seven years old and this dictated my my view on reality and it even interrupts it's even interrupted till today and so the way that's looked like is there was a scenario where i heard my mom scream my, my parents would fight every night just full volume just fighting every night mm -hmm. so we got it very accustomed to living in that reality one day one one day i heard her scream we all ran out my siblings and i ran out to run into the kitchen my mom's on one side she's holding a knife in her hand my dad's against the wall on the other side of the kitchen holding his arm he's bleeding from his arm he had hit her while she was washing dishes and she defended herself she stabbed him in the arm mm. and she was saying get back my sisters ran behind my mom now i'm in this room i'm in somewhat the middle off to the side and i'm looking at one side and i see my dad bleeding from his arm i look at the other side and my dad was a hero my hero at that time you know? yeah that was like my, you know i didn't understand i didn't understand lies and manipulation i just the truth is not quite making sense and that was it was because i was in the middle of it mm. um and then i see the other side i see my mom and my sisters that's yeah. the first that's the first time i saw my dad get taken away in handcuffs and i got uh he he got arrested that night and and it could be so or not but I don't remember ever being asked, how are you doing? Right. Are you okay? Never got asked that. And I never got asked that really growing up much of, much of anything. It's, it's kind of like you deal with it. Right. And so at six or seven years old, I learned, oh, I don't need anyone, which is a trauma response. I don't need anyone. Because based on result, I'm fine. I'm here. And clearly right. they need more help and support. So I must, I must not eat anything. But they need me. And mm. so when I would pray, when I would pray from a young age, mm. I would pray, I would legit pray as a little kid saying, Hey, I don't need help. I'm fine. I can handle it. Help me help them. Mm. Which is again a trauma response. That yeah, trauma yeah. response is is me saying, Oh, when I most needed it, it didn't yeah. happen. So I learned this context of I don't need anything. So fast, fast forward to relationships, fast forward to friendships, community. I was a lone ranger for a large part of my life out in the world doing what I do, helping other people. It doesn't matter. I'll eat the breadcrumbs. I'll, I'll endure because my programming didn't include me. Because when I was a kid, when that programming got formed, it didn't include me. And so that was an initiation of a belief system that shifted that world. So I say that as an involuntary one. Mm. Wow, bro. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was an involuntary.
Involuntary. Can we can we give a moment to to like thank you for that truth, bro? Yeah, bro. Thank you for that truth, man. Because I, I resonate with that deep, 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 bro. Oh man. Whew, okay. Uh voluntary, man. <laughs> thank yeah. you for that, bro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Voluntary was mm. the first time I did like a transformational coaching platform thing. I was 22 years old. And I remember coming in righteous as hell, man. And I was, I had a, a good head on my shoulders. I was angry, but I had a good head on my shoulders. I was like doing my work. Like, thankfully, creativity was where I poured in. Like, they became my addiction, you know, creativity mm. for a while because that was my outlet. Uh, mm. My dad was a drinker. Um, my, dad would, my dad would cheat. My dad would, you know, do a lot of these things. And so, from a very young age, I saw what the price that I paid for losing my family, losing my home that I grew up in, and leaving my school and my friends because of the consequence of these things. So I steered away from that stuff, thankfully. I don't know how I did it, but I, I steered away from it. Mm. But I was still, you know, as, as one of our brothers says in All Kings, not every prison has walls. And I was just trapped in mine. And one thing I would say from when I was, when I was younger, perspective is a luxury when the mind swarms with demons. Mm. When our mind, when my mind is nothing but fear, anger, avoidance, sabotage, resents, man, perspective, that's that's a luxury. Bruh, that's a lu that was oh, never God, son. Mm -hmm. Oh, child. I'm sorry, man. Listen, you just hit, man. Listen, go ahead, bro. Ooh, amen <laughs> to that. Amen yeah. To that. Think how many people are there again, amen doing the to best, that. best they can with what they know. Yo, that's, and can I say, man, this is one of the things why I I am I do my best to be empathetic because and it's hard at times because I understand for me, those demons are those demon voices are strong, son. They got oh we see, see, Kath, well, I, my judgment, most people don't talk about the demons, man. And that junk right there that's a, mm -hmm. to me that's another part of initiation man yeah that's a part of the journey of initiation yeah. because there is going to be a part where guys garnish you, you a, a cat is gonna have to face the demons because mm -hmm. i get what you're saying but i've been in spaces where i was right i've been righteous like you know what and covering telling that voice to shut the hell up yep. and that voice only gets louder to the point that it's a whisper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't get it out of my head, man. I and I think it's up. and I think it's my friend, my oh, ally. Bruv. Bruv. No. Because you know, here here's the thing, right? And I this is where I used to like I had to learn how anger could be an ally because I would use I would think anger was an ally, yet I would use it like as a rusty blade. Because I would use it because I cover up. I'd be like, hey, oh, happy Saturday, happy Monday. And then, like, I'd be highly combustible. And then I blow the hell, F, I blow the fuck out. I'm like, ah, you know what, you motherfucker, you shut your ass up. I'll cut you. I'll cut yeah. you. I swear to God. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. yo, what the heck just happened? Yeah. And this is addressing, this is a piece right now. I think, I think what's another piece of initiation is ex extracting the tools from self. To manage these different parts of life, man. Because the demons will never go away. Nope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nope. You just we just we just learn to live above them. Mm -hmm. Or we learn to dance with them and be like, oh, is that what you want, demon? Okay, you want some yeah. you want a double stack? Okay, how about we mm -hmm. uh get a green juice? Okay, yeah. all right, maybe a smoothie. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like I cause man, listen, there's a lot of stuff out there where there's like talk about hey initiation is is this initiation is that and when it comes down to it initiation is like one of the things why i appreciate what raul and i are doing here is initiation could be and i i, I thank you for what you did with the voluntary versus involuntary because we still got to come back to the um mm -hmm. to the voluntary piece but right. bro man listen let's come back to that oh because yeah. you came in righteous yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, this this piece that you're touching on, man, when the voluntary one really just was this ripple effect that started changing my reality. Mm -hmm. Because 
I'll, I'll explain why how it how it unfolded in a second but i remember going through this transformational platform that a buddy of mine told me for at least a year just do it do it do it i'm like nah man i don't need no self-help program i'm fine a couple of people don't do therapy it's i'm good i'm good i'm chilling and like i'm doing it right for myself you know things are not nothing wrong so let me not do this, which at that point I didn't realize something doesn't need to be wrong for it to be better. I don't need to, I don't need to feel broken in order to go reach out for support. I could actually, if my response is I'm fine, then why not? I'm amazing. I'm great. I'm fantastic. I'm euphoric. I'm, I'm just abundant. I'm filled. And, and what I, what I realized then with the voluntary initiation was when I went through this program that I chose, I'm like, all right, let me see what's in here for me because I'm, I'm being right about a lot of stuff, but let me let me just see what I could learn. Mm, cool. Mm. And I sat with this one brother who was the first, what I feel was the first man I ever saw. Uh, I was 22 years old, never seen a man before. Mm. And because I've seen I've seen a lot of just wounded shadows and boys doing the best they can, which is fine. But this one yeah. guy, he was like six four. His name is Jim Helen. Rest in peace. He passed away from cancer years ago. Um, condolences man. yeah he was six four deep voice just powerful but gentle really loving mm. and he sat with me and he was hearing my story and hear the things that i'm right about and he's like let me ask you something i'm like yeah he's like how's that working for you mm. I'm, like, I'm like what do you mean i'm like that question that relationship with anger how you deal with sadness how you deal with shame the ways you distract yourself the way you avoid the way you sabotage the best way you know how to do stuff which is great you know it's here not to shame you got clothes on your back you're not hungry right now you're doing fine yeah. how's it really working for you is it is it all is it all working for you and i know without bullshit that when i lay my head on the pillow at night because i during the day i could have some demons on leashes you know i could i could control stuff and i could be grounded i could do all that stuff but when when the mind swarms when my mind swarms all these narratives and critic and sabotage and man you should be you should be doing better you should be doing more or you you're not you're not all this or you promote nope. this stuff you promote healthy living at the same time you still get angry and you create destruction how's that working man in some ways it's not yeah and so then he he asked me what are you trying to be so right about you know, like, it was it was a slap in the face man because i was just like yeah man well here's the answer to that i'm trying to be right i'm trying to be right by being in control and the reason i'm trying so hard to be in control is because when i wasn't in control i experienced a high level of damage i got mm. wounded i got hurt i got my heart broken i got like i, I my whole reality shifted when i wasn't in control and subconsciously mm. i made a decision i'm never gonna let happen that happen again so i dealt with it the best way i knew how but what did I start doing? I started controlling anything and everyone around me. And mm. I started just poisoning my peace and my relationships and my reality because I was trying to just be safe. And it mm. wasn't working in every way that I wanted it to work. So I Damn. Had to do something different. So when so he brought that question to you, and then you you can't you came with it, man. You went in. Yeah. I, I I dedicated. I have another story of why, why, because um, I I think again I don't think just the the way through the gate, uh, like the gateway is is through just people. It could be experiences. It could be nature. It could be animals. It could be love. It could be whatever. Um, I've shared this story before with the community. Excuse me. And I'm I'm pretty positive that I shared it with you, but I'll mm -hmm. I'll say it again. Yeah. I had a cousin, I had a cousin that passed away from alcohol abuse. Like he literally drank until his body shut down. And yeah. I, at that point, when I was about 22 is when he passed. That was a big year for me. And, you know, I've lost a number of people to alcohol-related incidents from being hit by drunk drivers, having a drinking accidents, or drinking mm. themselves to death, like him, his brother, and his mom. But I was, like, closer with him. And I was with him by his bedside my, my mom and my sister were with him by his bedside the last three months of his life we saw him transition out and one of the things that he would say on his deathbed was no sabia i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know that that the way that i knew how to treat my sorrow my anger my pain 
but this alcohol, that was my medicine. That was my medication to how I learned how to deal with it. Because that's what he was taught. Drink it. Yeah. Just drown it. You'll feel better. And that became an addiction and that cost him his life. Yeah. And so when I learned how to put some of my trauma down, and it's still mine, you know, my shadows are my shadows. But when I learned how to navigate and have language and have tools, and yeah. I learned how to alleviate, create some spaciousness within myself, I thought, man, nobody did this for my cousin. There was no one there to interrupt. And how many brothers and sisters out there in the world without any interruption right now, drowning in their mindset, Bro. drowning their mindset, man, right yeah. now. I made it my mission to be like, man, I got to, I had to give this away to as many people as possible. I got to be a bold interruption because it could have mm -hmm. been me. I could, I could have easily not been here and, Bro. and I am. So what do we want to do about that? Mm. Brother. I'm so happy you're here too, bro. Because yeah, same, same to you, man. Bless up, man. Thank you for that, man. Um, it's 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 so um, resonant to think of um, that part of initiation that is an introduction to a new way. Mm -hmm. Because, like, when I hear about, like, and I remember you telling me that story, too, man. I was like, man, when you told me what he was saying on the bed, I was like, oh, man, he didn't know. That's what initiation can be. Mm -hmm. uh, an opening to experience something in a different way. Yeah. One time. One time. That could be all it takes. Yeah. And it could be like, hey. Maybe in that instant, something shifted so much that it changed the whole constitution. Or it could be that it just shone, shines the light on a different path that you can go on, that mm -hmm. I can go on, yeah. right? This is the piece about initiation. Also, another version of initiation is the number. Uh, I noticed several times you said that this all happened around 22, which is a master number, which is also a portal initiation, even numbers, 11, 22, 33, 33, for 44, sure. 55, 66, all gateway years. Yeah. So it's fascinating, right? When you think about it and, and this is, and this is part of the intention when we talk about initiation, because you know, I've talked to men about initiation weekends or transformational weekends. And I was like you too, man. Like, you know, when I did this thing called, I did this program called Gratitude down in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I remember, man, my friend had told me about that. I'm like, man, I'm like, man, you you see, man, I don't do that junk, man. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man, get me a Heineken though. Get me a good sativa. And like, yo, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm good. And yeah. you know, girl that gives some good dome, it's a wrap. But like I would, that was like that was what I thought I knew, right? Mm -hmm. Until I learned that there's a way that I could regulate emotions. Until mm -hmm. I learned us to really look at, like, damn. Even when this guy asked the question of. How's that working out for you? Being open to a different question. Yeah. It changes everything, right? So I think it's really important to, to know, um, especially again, for because we you you mentioned it, it's something I experienced too. Like, yo, men of color, we don't really like I remember the first time they talked about therapy. I was like, therapy. Hmm. Like, Fuck that therapy shit. Man. I'm like, yo, I'm not doing this therapy. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, man, I remember the first time I went, I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. snot bubbles and shit yep. <laughs> i was like yep. can i get a tissue <laughs> mm -hmm. but it was like it's something i needed because i had to learn because i kept things in so much yeah and i want to touch on i, I want to like you know because we've been going in i want to make sure we give an opportunity to really discuss all kings bro yeah. because like what you what we're talking about here like the things I've seen on a weekend, the energy I felt on the weekend, the ancestral just resonance I felt on a weekend, mm -hmm. but the healing I've experienced on the on a weekend, the community I experienced on a weekend. Like, can we talk to 
this organization that you are a part of, por favor, please, bro, please yeah. shine some light on on like the stuff how all kings is fitting into all this, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So all kings is is a diverse group of brothers that we come together in in a safe container to unpack our truth and just take a look at it, right? No fixing, no changing, no anything like that. Let's just let's just have a conversation. Let's have a real conversation about what's going on. Um, the way that it differs from other like mental health programming and doing all that stuff is that we have therapy. There's, there's therapy, there's, there's other mental health support. We don't knock that, you know, by all means, like get your medicine as much as you can and wherever you can get it. Uh, the way that this space is different is that we're, we're peers here leading each other. There's no guru in the front of the room with all the answers. We're all trying to figure it out. Why? Because the initiation process of us as men in society was never given to us. It's, it's by default, we have to learn how to survive. And in fact, there's certain codes of this day society that are programmed in order for it to stay intact the way it is. For example, anger is the only thing that's really promoted for men to experience because anger is aggression. Aggression is strength. Strength is power and power is success, right? So, so that's the only thing we're allowed to be because if we promote happiness, it's like, who's, what's this jolly mother effort doing? Oh, it's like, yo, it's he's true. all happy. What's this, what's this guy so happy about? You know, and it gets put down. Oh, if we're if we're sad, we're soft. If we're if we feel in shame, it's it's feminine, as if that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have all these these I guess negative perspectives on how we are supposed to be in this world, supposed to operate. But there's not. I man, I have a million examples of what not to be as a man, and very <sighs> few examples of what to be. Right. And so we right. come to mm. unpack that stuff. We come with our truth to be able to, to take a look at these narratives and these belief systems that are curating, dictating our lives and seeing how that's working for us, where yeah. we carry trauma, where we carry pain, um, and how do we access those, those emotions. There's a study, there's a study uh, that, that says there's you know, five dominant emotions, fear, mm. joy, sadness, shame, and anger. In, in all kings, whenever we do a retreat, we divide the weekend up in these key emotions where mm. we take a look and see what are the conversations that are going on in there? What's the story? Because the story is tethered to emotions that we were always taught from a young age. We, we don't, we're not allowed to feel. Yep. Yeah, yep. we wonder why, you know, men are the perpetuator of violence in our communities. We wonder why we innocently or intentionally break things. It's because we were taught from a young age, don't feel. Yeah, if I was Hulk three, smash, man, Hulk yeah, smash. If I was, if I learned from three years old to now to desensitize and not be in relationship with my emotions, how can I possibly sit in front of someone and understand what's occurring for them? Exactly, bro. Yeah. So we 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 get together and we we come with that truth. It's a physical, emotional, and mental challenge to yeah. to visit these narratives, and even if we had the courage to rewrite some of the narrative on what, how we think this stuff works. Mm. I, I I think you know staffing some staffing some weekends, and I remember the first the first one I staffed in the woods, and I was like, "Yo, this is real." <laughs> I was like, "This is yeah. something different, man. This is something different," and it's such a blessing to see how it continues to grow. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like, you know, I, I like a couple of times throughout the week, like I'll come back and I'll check out the chat and I'm just reading like, yo, these are my, these are my fellow Kings right here. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Like, yes, sir. and it's so wild because listen, I, and, and I want to just, I want to talk to this piece about while initiation is a key piece and we spent most of our time talking about it. Mm -hmm. Another key piece of initiation is the, um, is the maintenance and the integration, which mm -hmm. requires community. Yeah. It requires community. Cause like I'm gonna tell you what, man, initiation. Listen, I, I listen. I for anyone out there that's watching this that does initiation weekends, tippity top. Thank you so much for doing what you yep. do. And mm -hmm. please let's ensure that there's some sort of community or integration that's available for these men. Yeah, because men. When what happened? What I, I'm going to speak for myself now, and Raul, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know if this happened for you. When I came out for my initiation, my initiation weekend, stuff was rocky for me, man. I was trying to figure out like, how do I even act? Like I can, I don't even see people the same way. And I remember I went on a business trip the next day, and my boss was even like, "You just seem different." I was like, 
uh, I, I, I don't know what she's talking about. But inside, yep. I was like, I don't even know what to say to you right now. I'm just yep. like feeling all kinds of way. And yep. it was helpful for me over time to be able to have these communities and, and have these relationships with other men that I can connect with these cats. And like, yo, man, I'm going through a tough time right now. I need somebody to talk to. And guys want to have a tendency to fix. I'm going to speak for myself. I have a tendency to want to fix. Be like, oh, man, so you know what you got to do is you got to go to YouTube. You got to put in a thing and then this. Or you know what you do? You get some <clears> coconut <throat> oil. <clears throat> and then you put it like chapstick. <clears throat> whatever, man. <laughs> yeah. But like there's um, <clears throat> instead of being like, okay, I got to tell you what to do. I got to tell you how it's got to be. Yeah. There's a component of active listening. Right. And by hearing what other men are experiencing, it can help me to do my work. Right. It can help me to shift my perspective because if I see another man has gone through something that I've gone through or something similar, and I mm. see that he has the ability to surpass it, and in that um, journey, <clears throat> he's addressed his demons. Right. It helps me to see how I can address my demons, and it gives me the courage to know that, okay, I can do this. I can, I can be willing and I can step into the arena and really address these things mm -hmm. that have kept my life from working, right? Yeah. The way I want it to work. Yeah, yeah. So it's beautiful, man. So powerful, bro. This conversation about even demons, you know, before I related it, I related it to the thing that is destroying my reality, you know, the, the thing that sabotages. But really, these demons have been my allies, man. They, they've kept me alive. They kept me strong. They kept me sharp. They kept me driving. They, you know, they, again, there's a consequence of it. Like, it was like shut down when you need to, be numb when you need to. And that was how I learned to operate and survive. And I'm thankful for it. It got me here. This whole yes, thing bro. about what we do, it's not about killing shadow. It's not about let's destroy it. No, no, no. Because that's that's part of our strength and it's actually useful. Now, how do we hone that, the experience and the intelligence around these experiences so that way it could be serving us and the, mm. the thing that you're talking about man i want to i want to say there's two different avenues of that i want to touch on one of them any process of any type of transformational or initiation there's th i think there's three steps yeah and the, the three steps is one when you decide to do it because then you're saying i welcome something into my world mm. so that's one i decide to do it two the doing of the actual thing being on the journey, being in the process, learning the thing, being open and able to experience open and taking a, taking a look at what's being shown here and how can I try this on really for myself. Yeah. And then the third level, which is one of the most important levels, integration. Mm -hmm. If I learn something today, I have 37 years of practicing how to be me. Now this new thing comes into my life. How am I supposed to bring that into my life? And if I don't have peers, community, a support system, a structure, I will resort back to old old ways because that's yes, all man. I know to do. You yes, know? man. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. I do. And that's the key piece. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Brother. This is part, this is part about also community that you're talking about. There's something that's called spiritual relationships. Mm. And so let's say family relationships. Family relationships are more so rooted in fear. Uh, that's why it's more like get a job, get a 401k, get a safe job, get married, get a home. Yep. Don't aim for the stars. Don't break your heart. Just be safe. I'd rather you be safe than, than going out there doing something fulfilling. Right. Yes. So a lot yep. of, a lot of family love is rooted in, I know the wounds that I've experienced and collected out in this world. And I just want to spare you from them. And so parenting from a wound, man. Parenting, yeah, parenting from a parenting, wound. Parenting from a wound. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's usually family <clears throat> love. What's rooted in friendship yeah. love. Friendship love is usually rooted in joy or avoidance. They, oh no, you, you feel better. Let's let's go and change your, your mindset right now. Let's go, let's go have some fun. Let's go avoid. Let's drink. Let's 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 disregard. Let's ignore that thing. Um, right. You'll be all right. You know that kind of stuff mm. about kind of nudging about where you're at with spiritual relationships or these other types of relationships is like, man, I accompany you no matter where you're at. You, right. you want to be down? Cool, I'm down. You want you need support shifting it? Cool, I can support shifting it. You you need yeah. to sit in it for a bit. Cool, I, I'll get you for that too, man. Because I know I, I I have my version of what you're experiencing. Yeah, and that's man. a and that's a beautiful thing about doing this work collectively, is that I'm not the problem and I'm not the one doing the work. Man. We all are in something and we all have something to share. And when mm. I do that and when we do that, then we can actually support each other in navigating through this world. Now imagine a world where we could teach 
and learn and grow and be supported unconditionally from one another. Bro. Because there's some things like a shame process where I, I just imagine all the listeners right now, anyone who's listening right now, the thing that you might be most ashamed of in addressing, talking about, acknowledging yeah. could be your first sexual experience, could be something that happened to you, could be about you having a degree or not, could be if you've been incarcerated or not, could be whatever it is that you might be that you think you're going to take to the grave. Yeah. There, there's this saying that shame dies when shared in a safe space. <clears throat> wow. Wow. You know, so if we have these containers where we could be real and raw and talk and share, and then, I mean, sky's the limit, man. And we're trying, Dude. that's what we're putting on the map here. That's what the spaces that we contain, especially for these young brothers, especially for these young brothers that don't have the peer, the support, the mentorship, and the guidance out in the streets. Bro. So we're here. And this is, man, this is that P, you just hit on something else, man. Like these, for the young brothers out here, man, like, you know, for them to be around more men, mm-hmm. right? For for men to be around more men, because I think it's like there's this thing that can happen for uh, that happened for me anyway. When I got married, where I just like kind of disassociated from my friends because it was like, yo, I'm married, blah blah blah, I didn't get to see my friends as much. And like I I felt that man, I felt that, and I think it's important for. Me, men to be around men first of all and then also younger men to be around older men so you can see so they get an example of like yo man okay i see how you move okay because yeah. i mean like listen man like you know we talk about initiation we talk about like the history like this is something that's been done for thousands and thousands of years man hundreds of thousands of years man because everybody gets initiated into something mm-hmm. but the thing is like there's also been the component of the elder Right. There's also been a component of the sage, the one that's like, Mm -hmm. you know, that lives on the outskirts. Right. That's like that's got that connection and tie to both worlds, man, both realms, because there's there's wisdom there, man. Mm -hmm. And in in the sharing in that space where you say like the shame will die when it's in a shared space. It's like that's where the wisdom gets shared, man. That's how men uh, can up level can learn can can rewire can shift and when that happens man you're right man it's like it's limitless right it's limitless man yeah so this is oh man i'm a i'm i'm just i'm excited that we that we had this piece man that we had this time um yeah. hey man listen um i got all kings.org on the scrolling along the bottom and I want to check in with you, man. Like, is there anything else you want to share about All Kings? Because I know we got some quests coming up and For then, sure. like, you know, some groups. Like, so just, like, you know, talk to the people. Talk to the men out there about All Kings, man. Yeah, definitely. And how to get in contact also. How to get in contact. For sure. We So we work primarily in supporting uplifting formerly incarcerated men and at-risk young men. And like I said before, not every person has walls. Just the way one of our brothers say in our community. And so it's really a space for our brothers of color, any, any brothers that are dealing with something that they want to come and just take a seat and see what they could discover about themselves and support of other people all the way to like take space, make space. Right. So come here, sit, we'll hold you. We'll go through the process and like energetically process whatever it is that that's there. And then we pass it, pay it forward. So we have uh, several retreats over the year. Uh, if you go to allkings.org, on the events page, they have the next few uh, events. The next one's actually, I'm not sure when this is going to be released, but March 11th and 12th is going to be the next uh, quest that's going to be taking place in the city. But we also have weekly circles where people can just come take a seat and get a taste, two hours. Uh, there's We have a Harlem chapter, a Brooklyn chapter, an online chapter. Again, contact me any information through allkings.org or myself directly. Uh, my information's on the website. Then... You know, there's multiple ways to get involved in and be of service and also at the same time you know, come to this brotherhood and and see what's there for you you know people are welcome to come in and ask however they choose and however they please right. but there's something here that's really special that goes beyond words that can't be described because it's a reality that i didn't expect I was available for me and so we create that so all kings.org is where we have that space so we can come come together mm. Yo, yeah, yo, my man speaking truth, man. I've been in these circles. Mm-hmm. It's different. Yeah. It's different, bro. 
Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's powerful, man. Yeah, it's raw. Listen. It's real. This Yo. isn't. This isn't a let, let's let's just cry on each other's shoulders. Like nah, nah, man. Come, uh-uh, come man. Yeah. Uh-uh. Nah, that's why I appreciate about it. Yeah, it's real raw, and relatable, man. It's all. Th- mm-hmm. It's the real McCoy, man. And yeah. and like, listen, I I appreciate those spaces because like you know, I I just seen I've seen a lot of things. Like you know, I've just seen a lot of like. I just seen a lot of things and, and it had some experiences with different groups. And this group is real, man. Like, bro, this group is bro. And you know, man, listen, the cats that founded it, man, these dudes are, these dudes are truth. You know, I got to tell a story, right. Is, um, you know, it's just something like before we wrap up and it's, um, it's something that, uh, Anthony, do you remember Anthony? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so it was one of the weekends and they were talking about like, you know, being one of the leaders on the weekends. And he was like, I'm not going to give you that title. Claim it. And I was like, it was just so odd, man. And it, that was another initiation to for me because yeah. it was like, I always thought like I had to be, you're a leader now. Mm-hmm. Go, go and lead. Permission. Permission. Yeah. Yes. No. Nah. Nah. Anthony was like, no, claim it. Yeah. Claim it. And that's what this space is about, man. That's yeah. what these spaces are about. That's what all kings is about. That's what men talk about is about, man. It's and about even like name. even all even kings. Those, all kings. That's a reminder. Because we've been forgotten all that stuff, man. Like there's so many times in the world that I operate, it's like, oh, you're part of my language, you're a fuck up, you're this, you're that, and all this judgment expectations, all subjective to how we're supposed to be. What does it mean to be a man in our reality? Bro. People forgot, like, it, a lot of day and age now is we have to forfeit our masculinity in order to be <sighs> functional and not toxic or anything. So it's either toxic or feminine. It's like, how can we embody being being that masculine? And and all kings is that reminder that we are all sovereigns. We are all in balance. It doesn't mean we are free from sin. It doesn't mean that we are free from mistakes. But we learn how to get back on in alignment and integrity for the greater purpose. And that's what it is, man. It's far from perfection. This is about progression. Mm-hmm. Progression yeah. and ascension, man. Let's go. Look, Raul, man, bro, I appreciate you. Like, I know there's going to be more mass amounts of times like you're going to yeah. be on here having conversations. Absolutely. Shoot, man, it may be like I may be in a circle with my recorder. Like, yo, let's 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 talk, guys. Yes. Let's have a conversation. All right, all right. Yeah. So listen, man. <laughs> listen, man. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate the work that's being done by you and all kings i appreciate your path and seeing you and witnessing your ascension bro because it's beautiful man it's beautiful and i know with you at the helm man it's gonna keep continue to ascend and get and 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 progress and and move forward so bless up to you bro bless up to all kings i want to call here since we did call in all those energies i want to say energies spirits of the west spirits of the east spirits of the west those are the mystics spirits of the east the lovers spirits of the south our warriors spirits to the north to the kings Mm -hmm. to all kings blessings 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 to you thank you for hearing this thank you for being willing and here's to the real raw relatable conversations let's get it thank you so much man my man to you Bless up, bro. Appreciate you receiving all that, bro. Bless up to you too, King. Peace. Peace.